All right, just started. Undertale, The Integrity of Justice, Chapter 32, Heartfelt Confession. Rose walked up the stairs and headed towards Daisy's room. He walked inside and saw his sister's yellow soul floating over by the window. Rose noticed her soul was rather dim and wasn't glowing much. Not surprising, since her parents likely told her of Clover's disappearance and she was gonna be dead soon anyways. She's already dead. <laughs> Wait, am I on the wrong chapter? We're on 32, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Okay. Alright. Hey, hey, Daisy. Rose quietly said. Daisy's soul lit up a bit as she knows Rose. Rose got close to her soul. So, so about Clover and Melody, I, I have good news and bad news about them. The good news is Melody returned safe and sound yesterday. Daisy's soul lit up a bit more. Seems like she was glad to hear that. Rose continued. As for Clover, well, he hasn't returned. But, but we know he's alive and he'll be in good hands until he does return. Daisy Soul listened to Rose as he relayed most of what Clover's note said back to her. In response, Daisy Soul glowed the bright yellow. Rose guessed she was happy to know her brother was at least alive and well. Well, that's all I really wanted to say. Thanks, Daisy. You know, even if you don't have a physical body anymore, I'm, I'm glad you're still with us after all these years. Daisy Soul floated above Rose and landed on top of his head. <laughs> you still like doing that, huh? Well, let's go downstairs and watch some cowboy movies. Rose walked out of Daisy's room and headed downstairs, while his sister's soul laid atop its head. Over sat, laid down on his bed, still exhausted after yesterday's events. Monica's parents have decided to take care of him indefinitely until the barrier is broken, and he doesn't have to worry about being caught by the royal guards and Toro returned to take the throne. Needless to say, everyone is heartbroken over the king when Toro made the announcements, but she's trying her best not to let everyone give up hope. And stated a new policy that every human that falls down here won't be treated as enemies but as friends. So now the Royal Guard pretty much disbanded. Clover wondered what Martlet was going to do now since she was still part of the Royal Guard and probably out of a job. Clover also wondered how Melody was doing. She figured she'd probably go and get more human souls back to the fans first. And she'd find a way to break the barrier. She knew she could do it knowing how headstrong she is. Clover heard a knock on his bedroom door as he heard Kanika's voice. Clover, can I come in? I sound like your Scottish dad, don't worry. Yeah, you can sc yeah, yeah, you can come in Scottish, can't come. Oh no, it's my first line and I'm already dying laughing, this doesn't bode well. That was my cat. Did you say your line? I didn't hear it. Oh yeah, I already yeah, said I my line. Okay. Clover responded. Kanika opened the door and entered Clover's room. Um, I just wanted to tell you that we're having a dinner party tonight. My dad, who's apparently alive, invited Martlet, Star, Kaylee, and Casey. He had invited his parents. Over smiled excitedly. Wow, really? Can't wait for tonight then. Me too. I haven't seen my grandparents in a while. They're very nice, so I'm sure they'll love to meet you. Anyways, I gotta go, Clover. Alright, see ya, Kaniko. Alright, bye. Get fucked. Kaniko said as she closed the door. Clover picked up a book on his dress and began reading to pass the time. What a bitch. Melody heard a knock on her front door and quickly went over to open it, with the green soul following her. 
Oh boy. That must be them. Melody opened the door to see a middle-aged woman with green eyes. Her eyes widened in shock as she saw the green soul song behind Melody. Is it Sunny? The woman said as the green soul quickly floated over to her. The woman gently caressed her daughter's soul as she cried. Thank you for freeing my daughter. It's no problem. Melody responded, surprised at how calm the woman was after finding out her child's dead. Yeah. Thanks again so, so much. The woman said as she walked back to her car. Melody smiled as she closed the front door. Well, that's all of them. Good to know those children are finally back with their families. Suddenly, Melody's mother walked into the room. Oh, Melody, the news station just called. They're scheduling an interview with you tomorrow. Melody smiled excitedly as she heard the news. Wait, really? Yes, they did. It's not surprising. You know, you're the first person to come back alive from the underground after all. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. But this is good. I can finally tell everyone how nice the monsters are and how they deserve to be free. I can convince everyone to try and find, find a way to break the barrier. And maybe with my newfound soul power, I can help in doing that. Melody's method chuckled at her reckless optimism. <laughs> you sure seem excited. Well, we'll discuss all that tomorrow. In the meantime, how about we go out for dinner tonight? Just you and I. We haven't bonded together in days after all. Days. Melody nodded excitedly. Oh my god, I'm so, so glad to get to spend the time with my mother after not seeing her for a couple of days. I would love the... Great, let's get ready to go then. Alright, I'll head to my room and get ready. Melody said she went up to her room to get ready. Melody <laughs> was happy to see she'll finally have a chance to get a good word in about the monsters and convince humanity to set them free. And Clover will finally get to go free as well. Melody walked into her room, ready to do anything to set Clover and the monsters free, not realizing it was a ho hopeless cause. Yeah, you never know. Oh no, it is. Uh, maybe it isn't. As Clover was reading in his new room, he heard the front door open and a bunch of voices while his footsteps walked into the house. Looks like the visitors were here. Clover put down his book and walked out of his room. When he stepped into the foyer, he saw a bunch of familiar faces, including some new ones. Clover saw Martlet, Starlow, and the two cat sisters. He also saw two old-looking fox monsters, which he feared to be Kanika's grandparents. Starlow's face lit up as he saw Clover. Howdy, Clover. Me and the main cast are here to insert ourselves into your life again. Clover shyly waved at them. Hi. Martlet went over to Clover and hugged him. I'm so glad you're alright and stuck in the underground so we can keep bothering you. Clover hugged Martlet back. Uh, yeah, good... Good to see you again, Marlet. Your bird brain. <laughs> the old fox woman slowly approached oh, good one. Clover. Did Flowey tell you that? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So you're the old clover. fox woman slowly approached Clover. So you're this Clover that Chujin told me about. It's so nice to meet you, small child. Oh, uh, nice to meet you too. Clover responded. Tujin stood next to two of them. Hello, Clover. I'm happy in this fic and British. Anyway, these are my two parents. Tujin's father no. chuckled. Uh, I don't know what voice to give this dude. Uh, I don't know. Oh. Gotta, gotta say, Tujin, I never expected you to have a human as a son. That That's kind of cringe. Don't do that. Tujin nervously laughed at well, he's not really my son. Me and my wife are just his caretakers. I think. I'm hoping. Sir, but please. Over Conico suddenly walked in. Oh, hello, children. You know, Clover, <laughs> you're so lucky that Conico's still alive. Because otherwise, I would definitely have tried to kill you. Well, you don't have any anyway. reason to. Clover said to all of them. 
Anyway, dinner is ready. Let's hope no one dies. Right, come on everyone. Oh right, she's Scottish. <laughs> oh boy. Monica said as she come went back towards everyone. the dining room carrying a bottle of poison. Putin walked back inside. All right, everyone, let's go have dinner. Can you stop killing each other? We can properly introduce ourselves. Oh, my God. Putin, Clover, and the visitors went into the dining room to go eat dinner. Clover noticed that there was now an actual table in the room instead of a kotatsu. It makes sense that there were ten people here. As they all sat down, Zoro so placed a bunch of bowls in front of everyone. Right, we're having corn chowder for dinner tonight, Clover. Fortunately, yours isn't poisoned this time. And this time, Star here lent me some of his family's best quality corn to make this. I should probably have married him instead. Sorry, children. What the hell? Oh, he his cub. There's no problem, disappointed <laughs> that he's being once again reminded that his lover chose... A fox over stable financial future. Ripped his hat. I'm literally rich in the game. What are you talking about? It's no problem, Roba. Oh, stop reminding me. Casey's face lit up as she looked at the corn chowder bowl in front of her. This looks really good. He didn't pick up his spoon. Well, no need to wait, everyone. Let's dig in. Uh, I don't know who says this line. <laughs> it's all the foxes, but what is this fucking All the word? foxes. Uh, yeah, all the foxes. Eat, 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 eat a ducky. Got ma, uh, eat, eat a ducky. Eat a ducky. Eat a ducky. Yeah, I guess that's what that word. Say. And Katsukane's slowly pondered over trying to impress Chujin's parents as everyone began eating. Aniko looked over at Martlet as she was eating her food. Hey Martlet, you know why Delph couldn't come over? Oh, he said it. That was flourish. Clover. Oh, he said he was busy running errands at his house. Allegedly, Martlet answered, trying to hide the fact that they've used their vines to kill the vampire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how could you? <laughs> Thanks for inviting me and my sis over, children. This food is really good. Kaylee said as she swallowed her food. It's no problem, Kaylee. You're one of my best friends, probably. Don't betray me in later chapters. This shit always happens. There's the last chapter, don't worry. Eugen said as he smiled. Starlo smirked. Well, you can thank my family's amazing corn for amazing corn farm for the food in front of you. Oh, oh and Soroba cooks too, I think. Do you cook anything other than corn chowder? I've never seen you cook anything. Yeah, she always cooks Maybe it. Maybe I would if you'd stop throwing corn at me. Wait, she's not so We literally only had it. <laughs> Thanks, Star. I really put my all into making this one. And maybe if you'd stop throwing corn at me, I'd have time for other recipes. Rova said, proud of herself. Putin's mother looked over at Clover. Oh, right. Um, so, Clover, what's your story? Clover put down his spoon. Well, me and my friend Melody fell down here a few days ago to save the four missing children. And we were able to do that, but only Melody was able to leave, since she observed the only boss monster soul down here. Clover sighed before continuing, hoping that they didn't catch on that he just admitted to murder. <laughs> I, I told her to be the one to absorb it, since I felt she'd be the best one to leave, rather than me. 
Well, that's very brave of you, I think. Get you killed someone. Agent's father said as he smiled, not wanting to get on the murderous child's bad side. Agent's mother smiled. Lova, there is something you should know about me. It's that I'm a serial killer. <gasps> Eugen wordly looked at his mother at this revelation. Mother, please don't do this again. You embarrassed us last time. Oh, hush, son. Don't just don't look in the basement. <laughs> you see, Clover, I am also a boss monster and a child murderer, just like Asgore. Clover looked surprised. Wait, you are? Oh, let me pull out my gun real quick. Chujin's mother nodded. Yes, dear, why do you think Chujin's an only child? Anyway, as you can see, Clover, I am getting very old now, apparently. And I'm aware I don't have much longer left to live, although I will probably outlive you. So, when my time comes, I want you to be there. What? what? Why? Clover asked curiously. So you can absorb my soul and join melody on the surface, and then I can possess you and kill everyone. <laughs> Clover nervously smiled. Uh, oh, I'd rather you not do that. Besides, I'm sure Melody would find a way to break the barrier by then. So of course, Clover, but in case she doesn't, I'd be more than happy to let you absorb my soul so you can leave. And die. <laughs> Clover nodded as he smiled at her. Alright. Thank you. That totally means a lot. Are you sure, Mazip? You didn't ask? Oh, of course, son. If my soul can help this child escape, then I'd be more than willing to do it. Plus, the underground's getting a bit bereft of people to kill. Eugen's <laughs> mother responded. Tonica was the first to finish her dinner. Um, Dad, may I excuse myself? Grandma's being weird again. I want to go outside and get some fresh air and maybe call the royal guards. Oh wait, we don't have that anymore. <laughs> yeah, you're cooked. So, but Eugen darling, nodded get me approvingly, away from my warning her to be careful of James Bond if he comes by. Hey, he's down here. <laughs> James Bond. <laughs> okay, James Bond is here, I guess. Okay, cool. It was a joke about the British accent. Oh. Oh, Sonoba, please let me get out of here. This place sucks. Uh. Uh, thank you, Dad. Uh, Mom, maybe we should move house. few minutes later, Clover finished his food. Uh, excuse me for a moment. He did not it again as Clover stood up and walked out of the house. Clover stepped onto the porch and saw Conico sitting on the steps. Uh, Conico? You, you alright? Conico startled as she looked over. over. No, of course I'm not alright. Were you not paying attention? I just found out my grandma's a serial killer. <laughs> this runs in the family. They don't mind it too much. <laughs> oh no, not yet. too. Uh... Oh no, am I gonna become a serial killer? Is yeah. this why I keep trying to shoot Clover? Hey, I'm the one with the gun. Go fuck yourself, I can steal it. I'll get Mooch to steal it for me. Well, unlike oh, you, I just wanted to get some fresh air. Clover answered. Conico stood up, grabbing her gun. Clover, can you follow me for a minute? I want to show you something nice and definitely not suspicious at all. Um, okay, sure. 
Over said as he followed Kaneko to the execution grounds. <laughs> the two of them walked west of the house and headed up until they reached a cliff overlooking a large part of the underground. Surrounding the cliff was a small forest area filled with some trees and bushes and some dead bodies. Most notably, however, there was a large cherry blossom tree that stood near the edge of the cliff. Never looked at the tree in awe. Wow, this place is near your house all this time? It looks incredible. You better not push me off. I'll push you off. Come down with me. We're dying together. How romantic. No, I don't think so. Anyway. No, but I it's... think we may be shitty parents. <laughs> No, no, I do think it's mainly you, to be honest. I'm not what the one What did I do? I'm not the one with a serial killer for a mother. That's not my fault. Well, Your mother was also a serial killer. My mother's not in the fix, so we can't pass judgment on her. Anyway, back this to this small child. Yeah, it's one of the last areas in the dunes of any plants or flower anymore. This is because the tree grows from all the corpses around here. And all the dust is great for it. Um, my it makes for actually... great fertilizer. Me, me and Sarova exactly. have wands for a rest. It's, it's probably not good. <laughs> oh no, but it's good for the tree, right? Uh, sometimes but... it even starts singing. Well, well, you know, we uh, we kind of had to move down here because there's no royal guards here, so they can't arrest us. Yeah, every petal on this tree well, is the, the souls, but then the royal guards have been cancelled now, so maybe we could move back home. Well, we could, but I mean, do you want to move to Snowden? Do you know how shitty that place is, and cold? Oh, it's freezing, but Clover might freeze to death, and then we wouldn't have to deal with him anymore. No, I'm not like Birdly. I can't freeze. You were freezing in your own <clears throat> thick last time. In your dreams of piss, you were freezing and snowed in. Get good. Nah, that clover was weak. You, you died to freaking delve. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. Well, you're Uninstall about to die to bro. a child, so what does that make you? We've gotten very off topic. Okay, let's just keep going. Where I know, but it was funny. We? It was hilarious. Where were we again? Uh... Over asked as he looked at her. Oh, um, well, I mean, I'm a bit surprised that my grandmother's a serial killer. I mean, offered to give you her soul and she passes. Yeah, I am too. I mean, I did just meet her. I'm grateful for it, though. You really do have a nice, uh, yeah, very de totally nice and not murderous family, Kaneko. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're great, aren't they? Um, although there's something else you should know. And I'm um, sorry for not telling you earlier, it never really came up. Um, what, what is it, Kaneko? Uh, well, obviously you heard that my grandma's a boss monster. But you see, the boss monster gene and the murder gene is hereditary, so... Me and my dad are also boss monsters, and both British, apparently. I'm not a killer. Do Clover. not pin that shit on me. <laughs> Clover's eyes widened a bit, realizing that just one shove could be his key to freedom. Oh, really? Anako slowly nodded. Yeah, sorry for not telling you earlier. Oh, and by the way, if I die, I'm taking you down with me. How romantic. Exactly. Over oh, smiled no. at Kaneko. Kaneko, listen, neither your life or, nor your dad's life is worth my freedom, but I'm glad you trusted me enough to tell... I'm gra glad you trusted me enough to tell me. That was your biggest mistake. Kaneko chuckled. <laughs> you think this is trust, Clover? You realize you're in a field full of corpses, right? How do you think that happened? Oh, there's about to be one more. Clover and Kaneko continue to admire the view in a standoff of their mutually assured destruction. While the two of them stood next to each other, Kaneko kept sneaking a few glances at Clover, checking if he's making a move. Now's the perfect time to stop him, I mean tell him. Just gotta play it cool. 
So, um, Clover, there's something else I wanted to tell you. Conico said as her face flushed a bit. Clover looked at Conico. Yeah, what's up? It's just that, um, I, I want to thank you for being so gullible. I mean, being my friend and being there for me these past few days. A Conico few days? Said, You're shipping after a few days? Are you stupid? Yeah, it goes fast. Clover chuckled. <laughs> I should be the one thanking you for that, Conico. I mean, if it wasn't for you and Doc letting us follow you, I, I don't know what me and Melody would have done. So, thanks again for that. Oh, well, you're welcome, Clover. What happened to Dolph anyway? He's not here. That's why we kill him. He's not imported enough. Let him leave. Let him be. You're just sad. Clover's eyes widened a bit as his Starl. face went. Right. Clover's eyes widened a bit upon hearing the news. What? So special? Monica looked away nervously as she rubbed her hands together. I never said that. I think you're hearing things, do you? I don't know. I have dementia. Clover looked at Conico curiously, waiting for her to finish. Conico took a deep breath as she looked at Clover. Yeah, I think you might have schizophrenia. We're gonna have to get you to a psychologist. Clover's face was fully red now from the embarrassment of his schizophrenic hallucinations coming out. Wait, a a a am I real? Clover stuttered. Clover took a deep breath as well. Uh, honestly, kind of go. I, I cherished your friendship since we first met, but since our dance together that night, I realized I might feel something more for you. If you're actually here, I don't know if my schizophrenia is getting to me again. Monica's eyes wide in surprise as Clover continued. I don't know what you're talking about because I haven't read this fic. I'm no, but why are you yelling at the bush? Dance. I think we probably killed a monster with a good lumity dance. I'm gonna, that's my takeaway. That was very good. I'm gonna go and be a lesbian. It, there's like no woman in the wild east, but there's also no men. Actually, there's hardly much of anything here. Well, that's disappointing. I'll just have to go to the surface and date Melody. Oh, Are you standing that so low? So I can go date Melody. Just stand oh, up. she's, she's, she's actually Conico. she's actually our oasis in this one. <laughs> okay, well I'll find another human. Where were we? Clover nervously stepped towards Conico. All right, Clover. Time to use that cowboy riz your brother taught you. Clover held Conico's paw with his hands as he winked at her. Yeah, I don't mind being your Sigma. Conico Clover, we had eight weeks lessons for this shit. <laughs> Well, I haven't seen the internet memes yet. They haven't made it down to the underground, so what the fuck is a Sigma there? Anika composed herself as she smiled at Clover. I think you're too stupid. You need to get good. Just call yourself a Clover cowboy. Clover smiled as he held her closer to him. Thanks, Kana. That was, that was very skibbity of you. Oh my Monica Clover. shoved him away, <laughs> happily that things turned out this way. I am going to push you off a cliff if you don't shut the fuck up, you stupid little twerp. Nah, I'd win. <laughs> Clover responded. Both Clover and Conoco felt truly alive in this moment. Lost in this stalemate, they let their instincts take over as they both leaned closer to each other. Clover and Conoco closed their eyes as they shoved each other off the cliff. The two of them continued holding their fists together as they embraced each other as they hit the ground. Yeah, they made out while falling. Nah, what a romantic end. That sounds boring. 
Maybe Flowey wasn't that bad of a life coach. You face. guys suck at it. Oh, oh let's read chapter 33. That one's like 100 words. On the other one to cushion the fall. Oh, let's, oh, let's read exactly. the next chapter. That one's 100 words, but it's really funny. <laughs> okay, sure. Oh, that's where you go. Well, why, if you were going to wait for this, if you were going to say skibbity, why didn't you just wait for this chapter to happen? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you Kanako also says Lincoln. some things. <laughs> For God's sake. I yeah, chapter 33 is the real ending. Fucking words mean. <laughs> I didn't write this, Once again, managed to continue changing Over, the tone I'm of all of AC's fix. I know, it's brilliant. They're, they're so much better now, they're hilarious. Alright. Yeah. Clover, I'm disappointed. I gave you so many lessons, and you do this shit to try to get a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I think. now you're Wait, both Clover, dead. What do you have to say to your fucking sheriff? Well, am I supposed to say something? <laughs> what do you have to say to your sheriff, Clover? Uh, nothing. I'd, I'd I win. Unloaded. I'm the level 10 Sigma male from Ohio. Oh my god. What, oh what my does Ohio god. have to do with anything? Upon hearing this, Kanako shoved Clover off the cliff again. File loaded. Oh yeah, I'm alive again. Yes, Kanako, I will be your grimace shake. I don't know what that means. Clover, you're embarrassing and you're ruining everything. Yeah! Clover. I'm gonna strangle both of you. <laughs> Clover, who taught you this shit? I didn't do it. Who did it? Clover, I don't think you should be around my family, even though they're clearly terrible. And I think I'm going to take your soul now. So I literally didn't do surface. everything. Why am I getting so much shit for it? It's your I'm James Bond villain. Your mother, dear. Oh my god, I am not my mother. Leave my mother out of this. Your mother literally confessed to being a serial killer. What do you I want me to do you... about it? I'm a twink. I'm not made to I'm not made to fight against that. I want you to accept it. Yeah, the twink is going to die first. I except why? Anyway, I, I already know. Anyway, Jason's fixed. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I, I recorded all